I am back to provide another update. Um, I am actually one year post-surgery. So my surgery was July 24th last year. It's now July 31st, so a little over a year. And I'm coming back to you because um, I made my 10 month video. And at that time, I really didn't feel like I had a whole lot going on that was worth reporting or like any really lingering symptoms. But in the last couple of months, a couple of things have popped up that um, I'm looking to find some answers for. So I felt like um, it would be worth sharing with you guys. If there's anybody who is in the same boat as me who maybe had surgery six months ago, a year ago, and you're having some questions about whether what you're feeling is normal. I don't know that I can give you that answer, but I um, have ruled out a couple of issues. So um, one of the things I've dealt with that's kind of strange, and I had mentioned in a previous video that um, my ovaries were left intact, but that I had said it wasn't quite as cut and dry as my surgeon made it sound like. You know, he said, well, at the time I was consulting with him, I was 36. He said, of course, we want to leave your ovaries there. You know, we don't want you to go into menopause this early. So we're going to leave your ovaries, which is great. And, you know, I assumed that all would be well with that, right? But um, I have had some issues since my surgery that I would say I've questioned whether they were related to hormones. Um, and in doing my own research, I have found that even if the ovaries are left intact, essentially because they're no longer connected to the fallopian tubes and the rest of the reproductive system, they can... Um, stop working as well as they did before. In some women, you even have what they call like ovarian failure. So they're there, but they're not doing anything. So I've started noticing in the last few months that I have had a lot of vaginal dryness, which is then causing um, vulva dryness. I'm having all over skin dryness. Like I have never had a dry skin problem in my life. And the last couple of months, my skin, like no matter what I do is just so dry. I've had to switch body washes, moisturizers. Um, I switched my daily vitamin, like all kinds of different things to try to put more moisture into my skin. Um, my hair has been like, it doesn't, I guess, look terrible right now, but it's been super dry. It's been falling out like crazy. Now, again, in my research, you lose hair postpartum. So I'm just now 16, 17 months postpartum. I mean, I don't know. I've always lost a little hair after having a baby. You can lose hair after having COVID. I did have COVID around New Year's of this year. And then also having a longer surgery, like being under anesthesia for several hours can also cause you to lose hair. So those could be the attributing factor. So I did contact my gynecologist. I asked her to please run a panel of hormone blood work on me and all of that came back normal. So um, obviously what I'm feeling is not hormonal based on the blood test. Now, I have done some additional reading that sometimes those blood tests um, for hormones are completely inaccurate and that the best way to test for hormones is with a saliva test. So I may look into having a saliva test done, but that um, blood work may not be the most accurate because in order to identify hormone changes in women, sometimes it's the difference or the numbers is so minuscule, but can actually cause a difference in the way you feel that blood work doesn't even pick it up. So. <clears throat> I apologize, I'm getting over a cold. Um, I may look into that further. But in um, the last couple months, I had also noticed that during an exam with my gynecologist, I was very sensitive in there to touch. So she inserted the speculum and it was just very painful, which normally, you know, the speculum isn't comfortable, but for me at least it was never painful. So then when she was, you know, exploring with her hand, we noticed that there were certain spots that she would touch that were very painful, like make me jump around on the bed type of painful. And she said, you know, that's not really normal. So <coughs> <coughs> she had a little bit of a concern that I potentially had had a dropped ovary. So sometimes when you've had a hysterectomy and things are no longer connected to the fallopian tubes, they're just connected kind of like, um, I think with like 
I don't know, tissue, ligaments, I don't really know. They're still connected inside your body. They're not just free floating, but they're not collect connected to the reproductive system anymore. You can have one of those drop down and that can obviously cause tenderness when you're touching there because then she would have been touching an ovary. So we did have me go get a um, pelvic and abdominal ultrasound. Both of those came back normal, showing that my ovaries were where they were supposed to be. There was no dropped ovary, so we knew that wasn't the problem and we decided to just watch it for a while. Well, I went to see her last week because I told her that I was still having some tenderness during intercourse. And this was tenderness that was kind of new, like wasn't really like that in the beginning after my surgery. So again, like same tenderness. And she said, you know, I think that your pelvic floor muscles are incredibly tight. She's like, you know, before your surgery, they were very loose and that wasn't good. You pretty much didn't even have a pelvic floor supporting your organs, but now your pelvic floor is really tight. And, um, you know, that can just be caused from the surgery and he did all the stitching in there. And then the, when it heals, it just heals kind of like scar tissue, like very strong, but also, um, I am hyper aware all the time now of like tightening my pelvic floor to protect my organs, tighten that area so that nothing falls out again, tighten it during workouts, tighten it when I do anything with my abs, just tighten it when I pick up my kids. Like I'm constantly like tighten it, you know, keep everything in there. Um, and I think I may have caused myself a little bit of issue because there is such a thing as your pelvic floor being too tight. Like a lot of women think when they go for pelvic floor physical therapy or that all their problems down there are related to um, a loose pelvic floor, or a weak pelvic floor, but actually sometimes some women are too tight and they need to be um, loosened. So I am um, gonna be going to see a pelvic floor physical therapist. There's a really good one in my area. I start that this coming Friday and um, I've heard it can be uncomfortable and it's obviously like weird I think they insert some different probes and tools in their hand and like um, electro stimulators and different things um, but the hope there is that they can loosen that pelvic floor because what also led me to talk to her was that I have been having um, some I'm probably gonna say this wrong but I'm gonna try pudinal or pudinal nerve pain it's p-u-d-e-n-a-l if you look it up on a diagram online you'll see um, that pudinal nerve runs from kind of like your inner groin um, and then it runs up into your body, but it also runs down your leg and like into your butt cheek. So I have been having pain that um, seems to start there and sometimes radiates like all the way through my butt muscle and down my leg, it radiates up. It makes me feel like, um, I wouldn't describe it, as sh describe it as sharp. It's like a really bad headache in my but perennial area like I've also described it to my husband as it feels like where they did that um, vaginal vault repair where I've talked about they took my vagina stretched it out and used my own ligaments to tie it to the sacrospinous ligament near my tailbone it's like that whole area hurts like inside my deep in my buttocks near my tailbone hurts um but sometimes it is more of a sharp pain and like a shooting type of pain and again sometimes it goes down my leg and into my butt but often it's just there um, I've also just been feeling more pressure and I would describe it as very similar to pressure, pressure to when I was waiting to have my surgery and knew I had prolapses. Like, um, I had some of this pudinal nerve pain before my surgery and they just said it was from everything pushing on that nerve. That nerve was compressed. Well, now my question is, is the nerve compressed? Uh, is, you know, my gynecologist is saying that it just could be that tight pelvic floor is, is kind of pinching that nerve and causing that pain. Um, so I'm starting that physical therapy that I hope is going to help with that because this nerve pain, I wouldn't say it's debilitating. Obviously I'm still living my life, but sometimes I stand there and I'm like, I think if most people just suddenly started getting this pain, they would be very concerned. Like, what is this? This is super painful. It's super distracting. Like, do I need to go to the OR or sorry, the ER? Like, what do I need to do? Like, it's, it's pretty painful to the point that, um, the gynecologist said in the meantime of me getting the physical therapy, she prescribed me some muscle relaxer ointment. So I have been putting that ointment up in there. Um, and it does seem to help. It kind of feels like, uh, you put biofreeze in there at first. It's real cold cooling effect. And then I can definitely feel it makes an impact on that nerve pain. So it's doing something, but that's obviously like, a, a meantime fix because I don't want to be having to put muscle relaxing cream in there every night for the rest of my life or every night I have that pain, which is pretty much every day. Um, 
It is worse when I have sat longer. It seems to be relieved by laying down and believe it or not, being more active helps. Again, I think sitting compresses it. So that's when it's worst. If I've had a long drive, I've been sitting at my desk too much at work. If I get up and be active or get up and do my workout, it actually does seem to help. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go get like a second opinion from another surgeon in the St. Louis area who does this type of surgery. Not the one that I had for my surgery, um, but another one recommended by my gynecologist. And it's not that I don't trust my old surgeon to go back to him, but to be perfectly honest, I kind of felt like I got dismissed a lot after my surgery. So in the months from the end of July when I had the surgery to the end of September, I went there a couple of times, you know, and I chronicle some of that in my other videos talking about some incontinence issues I was having, some shooting pains issues I was having, um, some pain during intercourse and feeling as if I had something in there still, like it felt like a reprolapse and I just felt very dismissed. So I feel like if I go there now a year later and I'm like, I, f I wanna ensure I don't have another prolapse. I want to ensure nothing strange is going on down there and that my repairs are exactly how they should be. And I'm still having these lingering things that are impacting my life. What can we do that I perhaps am gonna get dismissed again? Or perhaps the surgeon isn't going to want to admit or take responsibility if something isn't exactly how it should be. So. I'm gonna go see this other doctor kind of as a second opinion. I'm gonna tell him all the issues I've had, everything I have now, what I've tried with the muscle relaxer. And um, you know, I'm, by then I'll have gone to therapy for several weeks cause I can't get in for about another month, which stinks. I mean, maybe if I had made it sound more urgent, I could have, but you know, I kind of just made it sound like I want a second opinion, which is the truth. Um, because everything just feels different in there. like. It, nothing feels like pre-prolapse it's it's I've said in the previous videos like having your bathroom remodeled well all the parts are still there except for the ones they took out but they're all in a different place like nothing feels the same um angles are different sex is different if I were to insert a tampon I have to go a different angle than I ever did before it's just different and there is something in there that feels like a prolapse to me now but I'm being told that that is my anterior vaginal um, repair and that that is what I'm feeling. It's just like uh, more toward the opening of the vagina than I would like it to be in anything ever was. So um, my gynecologist has been wonderful and she's the one referring me to this other surgeon to get the second opinion but you know even she is kind of like I'm not exactly sure because everything that you've had done is so different. It's not it's not a normal um a way for things to feel in there and every woman's surgery after this is so unique and specific that it's really hard to say exactly if things are where they should be or if anything strange is going on so she's fully supportive of me getting this um, referral and to make sure that we are looking at all treatment options and definitely ensuring that there's no need for future surgery so although this video is a little depressing I did um, want to make sure that I put it out there that one year post-surgery I am having some lingering issues and I'm having to look into those but that I've ruled out a couple things I don't have a dropped ovary I um, don't appear to be having hormonal issues based on the current you know way that the medical community tests for that um, my gynecologist doesn't think it's another prolapse but definitely wants me to have that checked out and we've definitely determined it's <coughs> pretty nerve pain the question is why is it pinched? Is it compressed? What's going on that's causing that pain? And for heaven's sake, I hope we can find a way to make it go away because it's super distracting and um, not ideal. So um, that's it. As always, please comment. Um, I am never one that wants to push subscribers, but I am finding that as people subscribe, it seems like YouTube is um, pushing my videos out a little bit more. So I think my videos are hard to find right now. So if you've found them, yay. Um, but you subscribing, you liking those kind of things helps YouTube analytics to 
suggest my videos more often to help more people but I am it's been very heartwarming that it's only been a month since I posted this channel and I am getting comments and likes and more views every day and so that's great because people are seeing this which was the whole purpose in me doing it so um you can also reach me at my email that I created just for this channel it is personal prolapse story at gmail.com if you have any questions or anything you know too personal to message um in a comment obviously i'm not somebody that really believes there's a whole lot of tmi i'm willing to share my story i'll answer any question you have however strange or personal you feel like it is so um not a doctor but willing to answer anything from my perspective and my experience so thank you bye